In this video, we solve problem 9.3.039 from Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. And we're just solving part B of, the, of this multi-part part problem, excuse me. It says, use a graphing utility to find the indicated partial sum S sub n and complete the table. Then use a graphing utility to graph the first 10 partial sums of the sequence of partial sums. For each series, compare the rate at which the sequence of partial sums approaches the sum of the series. So the sum of this series for um, one over n squared turns out to be pi squared over six. Let's just approximate what that is. So that's about uh, 1.64493. That's what we're expecting. Um, in order to find these partial sums, um, I don't use graphing calculators in my course, but we can always use desmos.com or other graph graphers that are out there in order to find these partial sums. Um, and that's exactly what I did in order to solve this problem. So I'll share my screen with you. And if we go over here, this is a website where you've got a partial sum calculator. I think I just searched for partial sum calculator. Um, and in order to graph this, it's a one over n squared. I just typed in the sum of one over n squared. This says start at n equals one and go to infinity. But we'd like to start at n equals one and go to five for the fifth partial sum here. So you just type those in. And then click calculate. And I like this one because it actually expands it for you. That's one over one squared plus one over two squared plus one over three squared plus one over four squared plus one over five squared, which turns out to be um, this uh, 5,269 over 3,600. And if we are um, entering this answer over here, um, let's see. Oops, that's not what I want. And they want answers to four decimal places. We'll just round to four decimal places. So according to this calculator, we get 1.4636. And let's do the same thing for n equals 10. Just change that n value to 10. Um, select calculate again. And it expands it out for you from one over one squared to one plus one over one, uh, one over uh, two squared plus one over three squared all the way up to one over 10 squared. If you add those together, you get this fraction. And then the decimal approximation of that is right there. So that is approximately 1.54. And then I've got a 976. So we're going to round to 98. Okay. And we want the 20th partial sum. This is nice of somebody to make this for us. Probably we're also making it for themselves and maybe some students in some calculus class somewhere. So we're gonna add one over one squared plus one over two squared plus one over three squared all the way up to plus one over 20 squared. One over 20 squared is one over 400. If you add all of those together, you get this fraction. And that is approximately equal to this. So that is 1.5962 approximately. And then we want the 50th partial sum I haven't done all of these in this calculator. I hope it can handle um, n equals 50 and n equals 100. It doesn't actually show all the steps for n equals uh, 50, but it would be everything from one over one squared plus one over two squared plus one over three squared all the way up to one over 50 squared. And that yields this fraction and that's approximately equal to one plus six or 
And now we want to go up to the 100th partial sum. And we get 1.63498. So if I was rounding up, I would get 1.6350. Hmm. And the sum of the series is supposed to be pi squared over nine, or sorry, pi squared over six. And it's a little bit hard to see here, but pi squared over six turned out to be 1.64493 and so on. So you can see that we're getting close to that 1.64493 um, with these partial sums here. Now let's go back to um, the homework assignment. I believe it asks us to well, it does tell us right here. We want to um, graph the first 10 terms of the sequence of partial sums. So basically what you're doing is you're computing S sub one, so that's one over one squared, which is one. And then you've got S sub two, that's one over one squared plus one over two squared. So one plus one fourth, which is five fourths or 1.25 S sub three, And you get the idea, you don't have to write all of these out, but we're gonna have five over four plus one ninth. It's 49 over 36, which is approximately uh, 1.361 repeating. Well, that's exactly 1.361 repeating. And then you would keep going like this, and then you want to plot all of these somewhere. So I think I would use that simplified fraction for each of these. And I think I will use that same website in order to get all of the 10 partial sums that we're looking for. Okay, I already had the first three down. Now I want the fourth partial sum. And that simplifies to uh, 205 over 144, okay. And the fifth partial sum, we had an exact answer, but I only wrote down the decimal approximation. So let's find the fifth partial sum again. So I get uh, 5269 over 3600. Now we want the sixth partial sum. See, this is pretty tedious. It is helpful to have a graphing calculator for something like this. or at least some kind of calculator that does, is comfortable giving you exact answers. It doesn't do, give you decimal approximations that will get worse and worse with every calculation. This is something that I might typically do in Excel if I wasn't worried about rounding errors, but I am with these fractions worried about rounding errors. So I don't trust Excel with this cal calculation, honestly. Let's see. Man, we're getting some interesting fractions here. Now I need S sub eight next. Some of the first eight terms. S sub nine. 
So you've got this number. And then finally, S sub 10. Holy moly. Okay, now let's go to Desmos, desmos.com and plot some ordered pairs. And actually, before we do that, let's look at the responses. It looks like the range that they're using is um, zero to three on some of these and then zero to six on others. And we know that um, the sum of the series is pi squared over six, which is about 1.64. Uh, so I want the one that goes up to 1.64. So it's probably, um, it's gotta be this one. It's the only one that's approaching that sum. Uh, but Let's, let's see, let's evaluate this S sub 10. We've got that 1968329 over 1270080. And then I get that 1.55 approximately. So now let's go back here. Just through process of elimination, we know that the sum is not six, so it's not this one or this one. And then the only two options were these two. And this number here is approximately 1.55. So this is the only possible answer to that one. So that's how I would handle that. And then we can see that this is approaching that pi squared over six. Now, most of the time when you're working with um, geometric or not geometric series, P series, we're just interested in whether or not this, uh, the series converges or diverges. So all we would say is two is greater than one, therefore the series converges. And we wouldn't worry about these convergence issues and what it converges to. <coughs> this is just a good exercise to see what it actually converges to. There is a method for finding that answer of pi squared over six. Um, but we don't cover that in this class. Um, but you can see that that's approaching that same value as pi squared over six if you approximate pi squared over six in your calculator. And then if you were to actually graph these, you would see it's consistent with those or that one graph on uh, WebAssign, even though we didn't need to graph these in order to correctly choose the graph. The other graphs just didn't make sense. And through process of elimination, we were able to find the right one. <clears throat> 